Dan here, nose high speed shop. So we're back on this 64 Chevy 2 and we're styling it with the Speedway catalog. So in the last video, we obviously put the whole front end on. It was all mint. Uh, I had to order a few bits and pieces that were either I needed or kind of got shipped a little funny, but I think when you get an order this big, that's what's gonna happen. Now, unfortunately, well, or fortunately, we're changing the rear end in this thing. I kind of had the thing a little far back. I gotta get that rear end out of here. It's just kind of driving me nuts where it is, but that'd be a great Tri-5 rear end. They're 58 wide. I think drum to drum is these little Chevy 2s. Tri-5s are 60, so you get an inch on each side. A little 10 bolt if we wanna put some something together. Anyway, doesn't this look cool? Those are, a, that's a 28 tall tire. I almost think maybe we can go a bigger tire. I'm, I'm thinking thinking about it we'll see what happens here we got some time I want to make this thing into a roller hopefully in the next couple of days and uh, we have a bunch of stuff to do that so everything I got I mean it was economical I guess Speedway housing it's a Speedway center section we went with a uh, 389 uh, power track 31 spline deal so pause the unit we're gonna put that together um, the axles man they're beefy they come with all sorts of stuff, so we have to press the bearings on, I guess. I'll have to Google how that works. Never done that one before. And then it comes with two sets of studs, so we can run, looks like half inch or 7 16 and then your little retaining collar. And it's cut, so it'll be good on that. And, uh, you know, brakes, drums, the whole deal in each one of these boxes. So, I did watch that, but I rebuilt the 10 bolt Chevy out of a 70... Nova or something like that for a 64, for, sorry, 56 Chevy. And by the time you go through it, you put Posi in it, went through bearings, and needed one axle, and uh, all these little bits and bobs. It was like $1,200. And then on top of that, I had to do brakes. And I mean, that rear end had like sunken in a pond. It was complete garbage. Well, by the time you rebuild something old, <laughs> you might as well buy something new and save yourself a pile of aggravation. It's kind of where I'm at. Uh, with time so for a few more dollars instead of having a you know I think this is the 8.2 a small rear end which probably be fine for Danny but you know what at this point let's give her I ordered a new set of perches for the rear end and then I got an energy suspension kit for us all scams on stuff uh, bushings and we got new leaf spring uh, shackles these are cheap I think this was rock auto you know like 25 bucks so we got new of them and then while i was at it the rear end was kind of sacked out this the springs they had like a instead of being a smiley face they were kind of like a smiley you know what i mean so we got a set of monoliths which were kind of an expense i think they were 200 bucks a piece and it was really the shipping that was the pain on these but they did show up um when we left it last clearly i had just torch cut out the old ones so we'll do that. We'll probably reuse the shocks. I think we got to, re well, I don't know what we're going to reuse there. See if I can unbolt the springs that I can kind of get in there. And if I can, great. And if not, we'll be sawzalling that out and I'll throw it in the hardware store and get some uh, new nuts and bolts, which maybe I should just do preemptively. Yeah, I should probably just go do that right now. It's not going well. Like, 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 um, uh. So my plan was to just go buy some bolts and all that stuff, which I did. And then I came back, I was like, oh, I'll start putting this together. Well, I really, anyways, I started taking out the rear leaf and I realized it's kind of a funny design. It's got this big washer, which ends up centering in the pocket and kind of holds it together. I'm like, well, that's, can this come out easy or not really? Ugh, not really. And then, uh, so it's probably like half inch, then tapers down to probably like a 7 16 and like it's a whole, both came out, so I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll just reuse these, obviously. So I put the one leaf spring in. Two hours it took me. Now, here's the problem. I couldn't find stock bushings for this setup at all. Couldn't find them. So I got those energy suspension kits, which I hate. They're like poly or whatever. They make nothing ever freaking fits. Anyways. The front, one's on the ground because I've been smashing and the car fell off. The front actually fits okay, I will say. And, and it fit in, you know, I can't complain. You know, maybe instead of just yammering, yeah, I'll show you. Um, do I have a light over here? Probably not, why would I? 
Why would I be? Oh, I do. Look at that. So the front one together, uh, pretty nice. There's a bushing each side, a little sleeve in it. I greased it, put it in, no problem. Here's that little kind of washery deal. So that's fine, just snugged in there. The back, the back, the back, the back, the back. So getting the bushing out of the subframe was a nightmare. Now, the energy suspension ones, as you can tell, I drilled it out to get it out. Uh, so I put them in, but look at how much narrower they are. So when I got the shackles, it actually came with these original style bushings, which I didn't know at the time. That was pretty sweet. But the threads on each side, if you put these in, well, there's not enough threads to tighten up. So that's fantastic. So I put those in, found that out, had to drill them out to get them out. Oh man. Anyways, now we got a system. Sometimes you gotta learn the absolute worst, hardest way possible. So this leaf is hanging. Um, my plan, unfortunately, well, the leaf spring's just barely, well, it's touching the, the lift right there. So to try and get everything lined up, you wanna kinda move the leaf backwards and it's starting to hit and all that. So I don't know what we'll do there and we're right jammed up and nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my plan was actually to take the leaf off, let it hang down, put the rear end in and then clip them on, like put the rear end on jack stands or something and then hang the leaves that we can carry on from there. I think I want to put the center section in the diff and then put that all in together. Then we can pound axles in once it's in the car. Uh, Cause when I did it before on the Nomad, I put the center section in and like, definitely a lot easier to get the, the axle housing in the car, but trying to get the center section was just a freaking nightmare. So I think I'll do that on the ground and then just drag the whole thing over, put on the leaves, jack it up and then, uh, I'd like to kind of clamp it down and start working. I don't know how much we'll get done today. This thing also has some traction bars, which I believe clamp somewhere around here. Actually, you know, I should probably look at that. They might even clamp where this is and I have to do some scooting around, but whatever. We'll, uh, we'll do it twice if we have to. This list wasn't too bad to take apart, so I can't complain too, too bad. And if it just needs a new bolt put in, eh, whatever. But I'd like to get the rear end situated and uh, we can kind of put it together and make it back into a roller a little bit. I don't know if we have the axles tonight or not, but uh, we're making some progress. So we'll set the camera up and you can watch me struggle on the other side because it's uh, it's pretty comical. I know I didn't feel much tonight, but today was a, a day of defeats and most of it was my fault. Um, <laughs> ask me for the instructions for the uh, traction control setup. I didn't. That's the first thing you have to do is push in those bushings. So I was scooting around with that and I managed to get kind of one all together. Couldn't get it to line up. And like I was talking about earlier, these, uh, they have a stupid washer that kind of anchor and centers the, the leaf. And that's what we're working with. So clearly it was in there and it's been wrong for a while. <laughs> I tried to kind of center it and all that, but it's uh, it's pretty beat up and mangled compared to the other one. Um, so that is a problem. And of course it's special Chevy 2 junk. So I gotta order that again, to guarantee it's gonna be a week away. But we'll order it anyway, see what happens. Maybe we'll get lucky. Um, I think we can carry on. I think I'm done for the night though, I'm just spent. But we can put everything together and then worst thing you gotta do is last thing is pull that bolt out, put a new one in, and it'll be centered up and fine. But when I was in there, the the uh, leaf just had a big wow to it, so that's very frustrating. Um, yeah, I don't know what we'll do next. Maybe we could put the the rear end all together. That might be just a job for tomorrow. I'm thinking just because I'm I'm kind of over it for tonight. Sometimes you just gotta quit while you're behind. So. I'll think about it, maybe you'll see me later, but probably tomorrow. Okay, we got ourselves a new freaking day and I am uh, feeling better. Oh, well, I'm just angry yet, I guess. Anyway, we have to put this leaf spring together. So I took the one that I had in out. We have to put in this aluminum slug. 
Oh yeah, I'm gonna whack it in first. Um, we have to press it in. Instead of running a, uh, a little bushing, or a rubber bushing, or whatever you wanna call it, we're gonna use this instead. So it should ride terrible. Let's get it started here. Perfect. Push my handle. Okay, so we have to press this in. Unfortunately, it has to go all the way through, so the initial press is easy. It's when you have to use a spacer and all that after. And that's when it's a hassle, so let's get after this. Okay, so the bushing straw was pressed in. We got everything kind of dialed together. Now, I'm in another snafu. I didn't order isolators. The Chevy 2, it's just stuff I'm not used to. <laughs> it's the main issue. Anyways, these freaking things have like a rubber isolator that clamps in, bet that clamps in between everything. Um, so what we got going on, this will sit on top of the diff or the uh, leaf spring, sorry, the diff will sit in there and this will sit underneath and you clamp them both together. However, without those rubber isolators, it doesn't matter how much you tighten it, it's still gonna walk around. So, that's a problem. Um, yeah. Anyways, I think we can probably still kind of put the diff in maybe. And realistically, I mean, jack it up, put those in after the fact. I just like this thing kind of all together in the rear end in, just so it's got the weight on the back or anything, so the, the car is more, you know, suited the way it can. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure when I put it together, we'll have to look at it. But I think even if we don't want to push it, I think the diff will kind of move. But that being said, if we have it all together, maybe we can put like a clamp just front and back so it'll clang up and down but it won't be able to to move too too much and i mean this is the bottom it's got the centering pin it's pretty bad whatever it is what it is unfortunately I said the other leaves are so torched out and junk that whatever what's a new part the real issue is my credit card got stolen so I have to go, every time you go in there, you get Danny to order something, it's a pain in the ass, going back and forth, and nothing is available local. Chevy 2, nothing local. Anyway, I think we're gonna pull the rear end over there. We'll put the center section in over there. We'll hoist it in, plunk it in there, uh, you know, put up the little uh, the shackles at the back. We have everything ready to go. Uh, there was two options for studs, that half inch studs or 7 16 I went with 7 16 I mean, obviously half inch would be tougher and all those sort of things. I guess it's not really a race car, it's more of a poser car. But more than anything, it drove me nuts with the Nomad is lug nuts. Now you have to have two different sets of lug nuts and screwing around. And the Nomad, when I had it, we had shank style lug nuts in the back for like the, the daisies. Up front were shank style lug nuts for whatever I had in the front, Hildebrands. Now this is my own fault, I know we're on different wheels. And the spares were steels, saying so like standard acorn style half inch and 7 16 lug nuts, which is just more things to lose or have to remember to take or whatever it may be. So at least this way, if we run steelies in the back and those are just your standard taper acorn jobs, the lug nuts can go front to back, move around, it doesn't really matter to get you to the next town. So I'm trying to think a little more uh, conservatively, I guess, is the word for it. I'm gonna see if I can drag that rear end over a little bit and uh, stuff's heavy, but it's cool. So let's get the Speedway rear end in. Oh. <laughs> okay. Whoo! It's freaking heavy. So last time we did a rear end, we put it in, put the housing in the car and then did all the screwing around. We're gonna try and put the housing in first. Actually, so Speedway, it's pretty cool. So this is, I think, their own diff and their own center section and all that. And they actually gave a reusable gasket, which is kind of neat. 
I've never actually seen that before. Oh, there's there are two ways this can go on. That's a problem. Oh, let's see if that's right. Ah. Oh, it's heavy. So, uh, does it matter what way this goes, you think? It's got a little, a little nib. What does the package say? Speedway. Reusable pumpkin gasket. Hmm. Pumpkin spice. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see here. I don't think it would really matter. I think there's anything in the way. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Well, that's the way I had it or not, but that's how it's going to be. I feel like this thing's going to get a lot heavier in a hurry. And now, you want to make sure you, I guess, have it the right way. This has a vent, so that would be up. I don't want to drop this on my... Oh, come on. Phalanges. Oh, gentle, gentle. Oh. Whew. Well, that was slick. Man. That was way easier than doing it in the car. Now let's put a couple of nuts on it real quick. Then the real struggle will commence. <laughs> Putting her in. So we'll be back. Oh, momentarily, I took I took the other diff apart. So these are the pads Danny just ordered. My my sugar baby. Um, so we'll see if we can put these on. I'm actually the sugar mama. Oh, sorry. I'd be the baby if I was getting them. Well, I did pay you, and it's for your car. But <laughs> so all the errors are rubber isolator. That the, that the spring will sit on or be clamped around and it has a little locating pin pretty simple stuff this goes on the bottom i guess and it goes on the top so doing it twice it's kind of crappy but here at db speed shop we don't think ahead when it comes to ordering things so put this together oh this is tight we'll uh slide this rear end under I really want this thing just sitting on the wheels. It's gonna look cool, especially because these are like little tiny tires. It's gonna be like, to the moon. Then motor trans and seats, driving it by the weekend. No. Is the insurance up to date? <laughs> There's a lot of sketchiness going on, but luckily it'll all work out. This is quite the, uh, beefy rear end for how small it is it's kind of hilarious okay so we get this in here gentle oh somebody took the handle off okay oh <laughs> you know i worked all day and this is heavy Lucky you get the film instead of doing any of the real work. You want me to grab an end? Can you grab an end? It's pretty heavy. <laughs> no, I I'll tell you what. Grab the this. I'll flip one end. Pull the handle. Okay. I'll lift up on the axle. I'll pull it under. And we want this under the pumpkin. Okay. Oh, it's Take your time, it's fine. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do a couple things here. I don't know what you're doing, but it's heavy. It's under it. Okay. Oh God. No, this is working out. Oh, my head, my head. Can you turn it to the right? Nope, the handle. Oh. <laughs> it's all, it's all that effort. <laughs> okay, now, now slide the entire jack to the left. Okay, give it a few pumps. Oh, Ew. we're idiots. So what we should do is probably lower the car. What are you doing? That's not a room. Okay, you know what? So hit the hand. Yeah, hit the hand. 
I'll just not be under it. Well, there is. <laughs> There's... Why? It's not that bad. Hit the thing, it's just heavy. I'm... Yeah, lot of one. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, yeah, that's probably good. Okay, now can you push this whole mess in? Going. Oh, hang on, go slow. Is that, you know, we can, there we go, we'll just do that. Oh, yeah. Problem solved. Man, um, where are we going even lower, to be honest with you? I hear shoddy got low. I don't know what that means. Okay. Drop it down some more. Oh, I'm just gonna wait here. Okay, keep going. Um. <laughs> you told me to keep going. You didn't tell me to drop. <laughs> I just have to clarify. I did think we go a little slower. That that was my mistake. Um. It can fall down, right? Oh yeah. Maybe we need jack stands. Will jack stands help us? Yeah. Okay. I'll try jack stands. Should I maybe like put this on something and then just use one hand? No, no, this is... Keep one on your side. Really? Do we need a jack stand on my side? <laughs> Can I lower it? Hang on. <laughs> oh, this is some good television right here. Oh, God. oh, it's so heavy. Man, why did you want a race car? I don't know, I was bored. <sighs> Terrible. Uh, you want me to lift it up a bit? No. Fortunately, the rear end's definitely not. Very centered here. Just do one side and see what happens. Oh God, it's gonna fall off. Can you, I don't know what I need here, but I'm getting frustrated. Okay. Okay. Can you lower the car down a little bit more? Yeah, maybe you don't. Don't go full throttle, like. Okay, hang on. That's not bad. Maybe a little more. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Nice me. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Oh, well, this date night. I thought I would dress nicely for you. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, there we go. So much. Huh. <laughs> That's the wrong nut. I've lost the nut. Well, this is freaking heavy, dude. These nuts? <laughs> Quit it with that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm losing it, man. Here. It looks like uh, looks like this. It's got a round end on it. Okay. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Solid effort though. I feel like talking to myself makes me feel less crazy. I feel like I'm really sweating. I don't look like it though, right? You look <laughs> great. Well, this side's tight. What's going on? Not happening. Okay, well, we're gonna fart around with this side for a little bit, but once we have that in there, then the rear end can set on the springs. Don't want peace? <laughs> I'm 
I'm a little cranky, but I'm okay. Honestly, you're not that bad. Okay, lift it up. Oh. Green button here. Yeah. yeah, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's probably good. Yeah, these have a front and a back. Oh, I need all those isolator bits. Can you pass on me? They're on the ground. The things are all junk and rusty. This? Yeah, there should be four of them. At least have some sort of a. So this must do. This, I guess. What a pile of garbage this is. This has a, a nub on it. I guess we'll have to grind those off. Right quick, then we can assemble it. Okay, so we had to modify this, but that fits fine. So we'll put that about like that. We had to modify Bottom one, well, I just had to give it a quick grind so it kind of fit in here. It's definitely still too big, but it'll be fine for what we're doing today anyways. So now, try and muscle this thing over. Huh. Oh, perfect. Well, I guess we should do the other side while we're at it real quick. What an operation we're running here. It's just a matter of U-bolts. I did grind down the, uh, what are these called? Shack, no, the pads, because once we get it all together, we're gonna have to uh, set the pinion angle. Well, this doesn't fit very well. What's going on here? So the pinion angle, and then uh, weld it all together, but. We'll do that down the road. Where is this? So, this piece here, we basically have it centered. Might go this way just a little bit. So, this piece here is going to go on the underside. Uh, we'll put this pad on. That's what's now going to center it. We put this on, it gives you both tabs. These are both the exact same. We're gonna cut off the outer one, shink, and the inside one is for the shock absorber. So we'll do that. And then it's just uh, super simple U-bolts. So again, this is just kinda to put it together so we can roll it around. Life will be good. One. Life will be good. After yesterday, life can't, uh, we're due for a bit of a, a slight win. Okay, so we got that. Just getting right in there. I'm showing the action. I'll probably grind that down a little more now that I'm thinking about it, make it look pretty off camera here, but, so it wouldn't, and it'll just kind of be something along those lines, and that'll hold the rear end in. Sorry, I gotta hold it. And this gives us this little tab here. Up to there is the traction setup, which I don't think we'll do just now, but I'm gonna grind these down a little bit more, make it all fit. We'll zing up some U-bolts. It'll be fine. Just fine. Did a little bit of work here. Danny went inside, but the rear end is in. Um, everything's just kind of clamped down mediocre. Nothing is torqued. Uh, you know, we didn't put any stretch in the U-bolts, just enough to kind of hold it all together. Um, I tightened up the front leaf kind of bolt thing, but again, the problem is all this stuff has to come out again because we have obviously these isolators. You know, we're gonna put new ones of those in, and then we're gonna put the new you know bolt in the front of the eyelet there. So the way this traction bar works, I'm not gonna put it in this video. Essentially, this eyelet to that eyelet, there will be a bar that's gonna go and it's gonna be uh, threaded. You know, left hand, right hand, so you can adjust it in, <clears throat> in and out, sorry. 
And we have to look at is essentially what it's doing is it's turning the rear suspension into a four link, the spring being your top link, and this bottom one obviously being your bottom link. So that prevents the, the uh, leaf spring from wrapping. So that's all we're doing. We're gonna prevent axe wraps, traction device. Um, but and it's super easy to put in. I mean, I looked at the thing, it's, you build it, it's like a, you know, it's like a tie rod is all it is uh, with the different things. But before we put all that together, if we have to get apart again, there's no point in making it difficult. And that bolt will come apart easy. Let's come apart easy. Go from there. I did put the axle in. Um, I just slid it in. I put two bolts to hold it. This has got kind of a cool design. The I'll show you the other axle when I put it in. The axle seals on the outside, and you actually, when you put it in, you kind of crush it, and that's what kind of does it. So I just put it in real loose so it can't come out. So I want to put this thing on the wheels. Now here's the reasoning for that. We're going to stand all the parts as per usual. Um, should be here in a few days. I'd like to put the motor and transmission in this. Put the motor and trans in, and then we can set the pinion angle. Now, the pinion angle is all dependent on where the transmission's coming out. So we have our, our yoke, you know, and everything all in line. So obviously we have to tilt it up or down, get where we want with the weight on it, and then weld it all together. Well, I didn't want to have the axles and all that all in because I didn't want the backing plate. So it actually goes axle flange, backing plate, then this and all sandwiches together, right? So we have a bit of a gap there, but if we have the backing plate on, it'll be down to here, like a big circle, obviously, like a, whatever they are, 10 or 11 inch drum. Well, right now it's very easy to get in and weld. And I want to obviously weld both sides of the pad to the tube. And I can also weld a, a thing front and back if I want for real rigidity. Um, so yeah, but obviously we don't want to, it'd be a lot easier to do without the brakes in is what I'm saying, because that will be going like a straight up angle versus this, I can get in there very easily you know, big deal. So we'll end up setting this thing on jack stands, setting our angle finder, get where we want. We'll tack it all the way around. Then I can lift the car up and then I can burn that in both sides with it in the car and it'll be just fine. Button it all up, tighten it all together. Then it's simple. These axles will pop right out there. Nothing. I just gave them a quick whack in and go from there. But I'd like to put this thing on the wheels, see what it looks like and ultimately be able to kind of maybe roll it out and clean up a little bit in here. That would be ideal. So we'll get to the other side and uh, we'll hammer that axle in real quick. We'll put it on its wheels. We'll take a look at it. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow in the daylight a little bit and clean up a little. And then really next video will be motor trans in, which I am so excited about that. Like this thing, it's fighting me a little bit, but I mean, it's an unbelievable amount of parts going on this car. And it's like a 60 year old car, right? So what can you expect? But at least now we'll be back on its wheels and we'll be golden. So I'll see you on the other side real quick. Also, the tires are gonna put on this, fair warning. They're teeny tiny. Okay, so here's the axle. Are we in frame? Oh yeah, we're good. So the way this works is it's basically got, it's like a you know, tapered kind of bearing. This is like a race, we're gonna knock that in. This is the seal on the outside. And how does you actually tighten everything? It's gonna to wanna to balloon this up. There's like a little rubber bit here. Then obviously we have it on the axle as well. Now the Instructions specified just a little bit of grease to help with installation. Hey, there's a there's an option to put grease on it. I do it. Some people ran RTV on it, but and, and we may do that on the final install, but because this has to come out, I'm a little leery on that. Put this in. These are man, what a beefy setup. And these are like curry axles is all like legitimate stuff here. Get this kind of lined up. So I mean really it almost goes all the way in. Uh, use a rubber mallet. So there we go. We can give it a few more wax but that's good enough for now. We're gonna put these little retainers in. Oh I don't have the retaining collar. Basically there's like a, a big C that's gonna hold all this together. And ain't going nowhere. Again, temporary, not permanent. So if there's something I'm doing wrong, feel free to leave it in the comments, but don't judge until the next time when it's hundred percent. So I'm gonna tighten those up real quick so they won't go nowhere. And uh, like it just did, and we'll go from there. Pretty sick little setup though. I gotta say, I like this. 
<laughs> well, it's a little sneak peek there. Um, this tire's actually just kind of rubbing the body just ever so slightly, not in the other, so obviously I don't have the rear end in straight, which is fine. I, I kind of mangled up those little pads a little bit. I just wanted to get it in. But it's nose high, so we'll see what we can do there. I mean, obviously, um, I got some smaller front tires going on it, so I'll take a couple inches out and hopefully we'll be able to put a little bit of weight on it. Obviously motor transmission, front clip, radiator, all that sort of stuff. We'll add some weight and bring her down. But uh, that is a sizable amount of parts um, in. Also the rear end's actually shipped that way, I can tell by the, the gap we have. But all that will be, again, that was eyeballed in there just to kind of put it on the ground. And realistically clean up in here. I have to go through all of these boxes and throw them all out. I've been doing it slowly, but I'm so hyper obsessed. I don't want to throw something out with like a bag with like one little thing in it and be missing it. But there you go. So it's been three days. So if you want like an instant gasser, I mean uh, the old Speedway kit, I got to say a couple little things here and there. You got to kind of work your way around and through and I'm sure every car is a little bit different and it's you know, a bit of a universal kit from 62 to 67. So maybe there's a few little things different along the way, but overall pretty slick. And uh, I probably got 20 hours in it. So if you had a running driving car already, especially if you already had a rear end in it, like you'd be dialed, motor out, clip on, motor in, figure out what you gotta do and go from there. Anyways, we'll come back tomorrow, maybe look at it in the daylight a little bit more. And then a video after that, Oh, we're putting the mill together. Look at that, cleaned up in here. We got the crane out, because I was gonna do the motor. And then uh, actually I put the, I bought a set of used 275-60s. I actually kind of think I might want a bigger tire on this yet. I don't know, we'll see. I, uh, so these are 275-60s. I'm thinking a 295-65 would be another two inches taller. It'll look kind of cool. Throw the gear ratio a little bit, but eh, what are you gonna do? Anyway, we were gonna click cleaned up, which I did last night, and then today we we're gonna finish off video. But I thought what we would do to finish this one off is maybe finish off the rear end a little bit more proper. The little pads came in, so they're not all mangled up. I think we might have to drill out the bottom piece just a little to make these fit. But it should be a very simple, oh, very simple little deal. Oh, this is all done. Let's fit in there. Anyway. We'll start messing with it. We'll get this thing up in the air. We'll pull the tires. And I don't think there's a way in hell these are going to fit in there without starting to cut. So we'll probably do that at a later date. But at least the rear end will be dialed other than pinion angle, which will be super easy to do once you get the motor and transmission in, which uh, I've cleaned mostly. That's all. That's the keep pile, you know, instructions and whatnot and some tools. Next video, that and that together and in. See you up in the air. Well, just like that, one side's together. I figured I'd just show you this side done, then we'll build the other side together. So we have our new of these in. These are junk. Uh, I installed this little traction device thing. It's it's just loose in there. Um, pretty simple little setup. Essentially, it's a bar with a heim, a bar with a heim, and it actually floats in and out of here. Um, it said, I actually didn't really read really the instructions too much, so don't even take my advice on if this is correct or not, but. I think that's the way it goes. I don't know how to set it. If we have to set it loaded or hanging, no, you know, whatever, but that's irrelevant. Uh, for now, it just, it's on there and it clears the lift. That's all I really wanted to make sure is I could still jack this thing up. Because stuff like this, uh, years ago, I had a, well, I still have a 71 Nova. And it had slapper bars on it. I went to go take it for alignment. It was like a big hassle because the slapper bars were dragging the alignment. They were not smart enough to like put a two by four on a tire or something. So in the parking lot, I'm taking friggin' slapper bars off to get an alignment. Anyway, um, we'll go ahead and get the other side all dialed together. Very simple setup. Uh, I did have to drill out the bottom tab just to fit the new pad. And I cut the little knob off here for the leaf. Um, as you did notice, I might have massaged this slightly with a hammer to see if I can get the tire to fit. It's going to be a struggle. Also, I don't know if I have the right backspace. I'm going to have to run a spacer to pull it away from the leaf spring. But other than that, it's mint. Here is the bottom. So this is obviously the pad that we're going to do. The leaf spring will sit on top. This little pad will you know, kind of all fit together. Now, the leaf spring has a little locating pin, which you have to put this little spacer on the pin itself. 
which then fits inside the bushing. Now the bushing, I mean, well, clearly just look at the size is not bueno. So I have to drill that out and then this will fit in there and center it. So I got the drill out, we'll do that real quick. And then I'm just gonna slice the ear off, uh, make sure it is the outer ear. So this, we'd be in the car, this is the, I think that's how we're gonna cut off. So I'll get that done real quick and we'll uh, size this baby up. Okie dokie, so extremely simple. Lift this up, oh, I should take a new bolt out, dummy. So the pad, old one out, new one on. Where is that? Oh, centered there. Ah. We gotta go way back just a little bit. And now, put this all together so you can see, drilled and cut. This now fits in there nicely. Carry on. That all centered up in there. We'll do this first, actually. Okay. Okay, let's put this unit together. So, pretty simple stuff. Essentially, um, this is our little slide. We'll put a little uh, bushing in there, a little stopper. Rod ends on both uh, both sides, and I think that is pretty well it. Um, never sees everything. A little grease on the center, and you're all set. So let's just build it real quick. Ugh. <laughs> well, it looks a little ridiculous. The tires, uh, well, they rub a little. But you know, I don't even know how little radius is. We'll see once the rear end is in and centered and all that. That might change things. But maybe it'll kind of nick off there. And then the inner wheel tub might need a little massage with a hammer. And we'll be able to fit these things. Now, realistically, a 2810 would fit mint, but Mickey Thompson don't make those no more. I have a set on uh, that 56 Chevy. We could test them and see, because these are same diameter, but slightly wider. So a little narrower might be nice, but we'll see. I mean, we wanna make sure we have a tire on there. We can get anywhere we're going. Not some weird, unique deal. That's all together. I think it has kind of a cool look. I was worried about being too nose high, but I don't know if I'm just getting used to it, or maybe the smaller front tires and the bigger back tires are taken away from it. And hopefully once the motor and trans is in, it'll drop another, you know, inch or two in the front and it'll be ridiculous, but the right amount. And I don't know how much screwing around I want to do in these rear tires. Honestly, if we have to really start cutting, I think I'll just spend the money and put a set of uh, 295 65s, which will be a 30 tall tire, which will be ridiculous, but it'll look freaking cool. But that's for Liam for today in this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. You weirdos watching me in the garage are basically it's funding this whole operation so uh please keep coming back make sure you like the video that makes a huge difference for myself and uh, to youtube somehow some way there you are let me know what you think in the comments section i will be putting the motor and transmission together maybe i'll suck your murder come over and help me slide her in and uh once the motor trans is in front clip can go on stuff like that seats go in should be a lot of little things. I, I do feel as though this car is gonna go together in, uh, well, it's been four days. And uh, I mean, really tonight we'll have the motor trans in. So in a matter of four or five days, it'll, a lot will have happened, but those little things are gonna bite us in the butt. There's no bones, but figuring out the steering linkage, 
uh, you know, the rear suspension, what's going to fit with the tires, all those sort of little things, getting the drive shaft cut, yada, yada, yada. We are in a bit of a time crunch, but I think we're going to be okay. We got to plumb the whole thing for fuel, brakes, I don't know if we the battery in the trunk. There's just all these things kind of piling up, but uh, I'm going to keep going. I love it. Looks like a greasy gaster. Hopefully Danny likes it. We got to get her lettered up front to back. Go from there. I'll see you in the next video, which will be right now for myself. Thanks for watching.